welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. Remember to turn on the bell and uh, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any episode that we upload on the channel. My guest today is a politician, a lawyer, a married man, a social media influencer. I'm talking about Chilukia Tayali. Yes, join me as I chat with him on the other side. All right, welcome back to Getting Candid. I mentioned that I'll be chatting with a politician, lawyer, and social media influencer, Mr. Chilukia Tayali. Good morning. Good morning. I, I see in that introduction you already give me an, a title of a lawyer. I'm not really a professional lawyer, though okay. I call myself a public lawyer. I am not uh, a lawyer before uh, the Law Association of Zambia come okay. uh, gun blazing against me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I've always thought you are Look, let, just uh, let me know why you call yourself a lawyer, though. Uh, no, basically why I call myself, I call myself a public lawyer of public court of opinions. Oh, okay. That's, I usually qualify that. I don't just end to say lawyer. I usually say public lawyer of the public court of opinion. Okay. And uh, basically, um, um, you know, when there are issues that pertains to, you know, legal matters, court cases and other issues, uh, usually the, the lawyers themselves, when they are trying to explain, they sort of kind of lose the public, you know. People don't really understand what are they talking about. And um, I've got interest in, you know, in reading uh, law. And um, I sort of want to come in between to make the general public understand. Like you speak in the layman's language. Exactly, exactly. That's okay. why, so that the, the people can understand and also form an opinion as a public. Okay. You know, so um, that's why I call myself a public lawyer okay. of the public court of opinion. Because yes, there are those courts, but we also need to understand and form informed opinions. And that's why I call myself a public lawyer. Okay, uh, that's a great clarification because you know what I thought? Uh, recently you posted something about a young girl that was abused. Exactly. So I thought you were actually the one representing that little girl. Exactly, and you see that is another aspect of uh, what I do in public, which is like advocacy because uh, sometimes people don't understand what their rights are and sometimes they're actually abused, you know, and um, you know, they have nowhere to run to. You know, they can't go to a lawyer, you know, a professional lawyer and seek legal uh, opinion or advice. They are scared because sometimes they don't have the money, and mostly, especially these people, like the, the people that you are talking about, the, the family of that uh, uh, young girl uh, who was uh, defiled. And um, somehow, uh, you know, the family felt that the case was not was not given was not being given the attention it deserved and that's how they came to me and uh, I sort of like brought it out in public because usually some when you bring out these things in public the people that are involved they get that uh, you know they, they, they tend to be careful and they give their attention that a case uh, deserves and that is what uh, I, I try to do to help the public, mostly those people who have no voices, those people who cannot afford to go and uh, see uh, a professional lawyer who may charge them. Okay. You know, so sometimes, I mean, certain cases, after, inter after in engaging with people, I do refer them to professional lawyers. I've got a number of good lawyers, uh, friends, who some, in certain cases, I mean, are even able to take pro bono um, you know, some of the cases that uh, I highlight. Okay. So basically, that is uh, what I do. Okay, have you, I think that's a good clarification because I see some comments on your posts. Some people will be like, ah, you're not a real lawyer. How, you, how do you speak like this? A lawyer will not speak like that. Exactly. So I guess a lot of people didn't know that you were actually not like a lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. But usually, people just, many times, those people that uh, want to say, no, you're not a real lawyer. So how do you talk? It's usually out of spite. But you know what? I would actually uh, be proud to say that if I was really, uh, if I was taking these cases in court, I think I would have uh, won all of them because none of my opinions so far, 
legal opinion, be it legal opinion, have actually faltered. Because even the, the issue of, uh, you know, recently we had this issue of Bill 10, where Jack Mwimbu, you know, the leader of the opposition, came out and said Bill 10 is dead. And uh, he was, from his, from his understanding of the law, he was speaking from that point of view that no, you know, according to the law, the speaker has abused and so on and so forth. And I stood up to say, no, 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 this is not, it's not true. And indeed, Jack Mimbo went to court and he lost that case. Presidential petition, when the, you know, there was that presidential petition, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the UPND went to court. And most of the things that if you went back and followed how I was arguing the cases, they actually just fell exactly according to how I was, uh, I was arguing. So basically, I think I'm a good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, I, I think I admire you for one thing. A lot of people are so negative about you on social media. They'll say this, the people that like you. I think when you post things to do with politics, you, re you receive a lot of uh, backlash. But when you post, obviously, about something about to do with family, a lot of people love you on, in that line. But yeah, here's one thing. People assume you, you, uh, your party is not a real part, political party. You are part of the patriotic front, but you just don't want to come out and say it. Can you clarify that? You see, that is usually um, more of a, 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 a national problem than a Chilifatayali problem. Why do I say that? You know, in this country, um, we are highly polarized, meaning um, you, you are either on the ruling party side or on the opposition. And if you are on the ruling side, ruling party side, you will not see anything wrong. Even when cadres are going to a police, beating up police, police uh, uh, you know, officers at a police station, because you're on the ruling side, you only you say it is okay, okay? But if you are on the negative side, if you are, if you are on the opposition side, you will never see anything wrong in the opposition. Particularly, you know, let's face it, I mean, the, 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 the biggest opposition is UPND led by Mr. Haka Inde Hichilema. And uh, I am quite critical of Mr. Haka Inde Hichilema, for example. And, um, I criticize him not because I, I don't like him or I'm malicious or I'm fabricating things. I talk about real issues. When I talk about the issue of privatization, it's real. It's real, it is factual, it's there. But when you criticize, when you criticize, uh, you know, the, the, the ruling party, those in the ruling party, they will start bashing you and accusing you of being paid and so on and so forth. It's the same when you bash the opposition. They will, the, those, the UPND, they will come out strongly, furiously, and uh, say all sorts of things. But the, the point is, the point is, we need to come to a point where we are objective, where we are reasonable. But here's the thing. Uh, recently, a lot of youths, a lot of young people have been very outspoken about governance issues, right? Yes. And uh, you seem to tell them, look, you can't speak out. You are more like... Uh, it was more of you saying, uh, even when they were saying we're going to have a peaceful uh, protest, you were totally against that. And for, for most of them, it was like, okay, we want to speak on something, things that are affecting us, but you completely discourage that. Don't you think it's important for sometimes for people to actually speak out? And... I never discourage young people from uh, speaking out. And I never discourage. I'm one people that encourage people to speak out. Yeah. So I never, at any point, discourage the young people to speak out. My issue is, when you are talking, whatever, uh, when you want to speak out on national issues, don't base them on your personal frustrations. And when you want to demonstrate, you have to be very specific. What is it that you are demonstrating? You can't just come to say, no, 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 uh, we young people, we are not happy. We are not happy because uh, we are not being given freedom of expression. How do you say we are not being given freedom of expression? You are a youth and you are running this show. This is part of freedom of expression. I'm sure you'll be very happy to have some of these young people. And I'm sure I was watching, I was checking some of um, you know, the interviews that you have done. You have had many young people on your platform. This is a platform of freedom of expression. People do log into their Facebook, you know, and they they do these live videos. So the freedom of expression, to say there is no freedom of expression in Zambia, I don't think that is right. But of course, 
when you open your social media or when you come on this platform and you start calling this one is a prostitute, that one is a criminal, you must back up that. And that is not right. In as much as if you want to be respected, you must, you must also respect other people. So the freedom of expression is not an open check where you can say whatever you want. So that is, that is where I come in and I say, no, can we regulate ourselves when we are talking? And then the other point of to say, no, we want to protest. Why do you want to protest? No, there is too much corruption in this country. Come on. Helen is not corrupt. I am not corrupt. And those in government, not all of them are corrupt. So when you are talking about corruption, be very specific. I can give you an example. At the moment, I am, I'm, I'm strongly criticizing President Edgar Lungu for allowing Chitalu Chilufia to be in office whilst he's answering corruption charges. I'm strongly attacking, uh, criticizing that. So you need to be very specific. And I even said, we might even protest. I actually wanted to protest. And that protest is not against the government in, in general. It is about one specific issue which is not going right. So those people who are protesting in the bush like they are doing exorcism of, you know, spirits. I mean, if they were very specific, I saw those placards. Hey, too much corruption. We want our God. Hey, we want... Come on. What are you talking about? Be very specific. Okay, now let's take a break. We're still chatting with that. If I tell you, don't change the channel. Stick on. Welcome back. Uh, before we move on to other things, quick, a quick one. Why did you choose to form your own political party and not join an already existing one? Political parties are formed based on uh, a vision of somebody and their ideology. Because you must have a vision and from that vision you formulate, you know, the ideology of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the party. So when I look around uh, the political parties that are there, there is no party that, uh, you know, uh, envisages my, 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 my vision. My vision um, is, you know, to restore, you know, we have lost Zambia. As a country, we are independent, but we have lost this country as Zambians. We don't own this country. You know, we just uh, flush out those NRCs, but that's it. There is nothing further than your NRC that you can brag about to say, I'm Zambian, this is my country. Maybe that's why they used to are saying we want our gold back. Well, they should say that. <laughs> they should say that. They should be very specific about it and not just, uh, uh, you, you know, be all over, you know. Okay. Uh, so that, that, is, that is the point. So for me, I have that vision that this country has been overtaken by other people, not Zambians, not Zambian especially economically we have the the liberties the you know the freedoms that we are talking about and this is why you want even more freedom to insult people i mean at will we have the freedoms but but we don't have you know the economy they they, they we are not holding the economy of this country and this is why most of the young people are frustrated most of them who those people who are talking it's out of frustration when they are given a job look how many of these young people in this country? For some of them, I don't want to mention their names because I don't want to embarrass them on your nice program. <laughs> but you would find that they will be speaking on, you know, shouting on top of their voices. But the moment they are appointed, they go quiet. They start defending the very things that they were speaking against. So from my point of view, I see that some of these young people, they make the noise just to get their attention. Otherwise, it's not really... It's not really looking at national issues. It's about getting their attention. I would, I can speak about this Biflo. I can mention him because he was one of those. Biflo, he was making a lot of noise. At night, he went wrote a letter, took it to state house. Eh? He wrote a letter himself and took it to state house, seeking for an appointment. Uh -huh. The agenda of the meeting that he wanted at state house is not known. So you didn't believe his clarification because he clarified. Even on this show, he clarified. Come on, please. We, 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 I'm, I'm not that naive. <laughs> if at all, that B floor, that day he went to State House, if he had met Edgar Lungo on the corridors, ah, B floor, young man, how are you? Ah, no, I like you very much. 
I'm appointing you what 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 that would have been the end of him okay that would have been the end of him we have seen a number of them I don't want to mention them give an example <laughs> you know what I mean I'll give an example <laughs> Go back and read what he was writing. Today is... <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. I mean, okay. Look. Okay. Uh, you know, so I do understand the situation that the young people go through, but the point I'm trying to make is don't try to make a big issue over, you know, national whatever. If you don't have a job, say, I don't have a job. Because whilst you are saying, no, in this country, there are no jobs and so on and so forth, there are young people who are getting employed. Even in this country, there is no empowerment, there are young people who are getting loans from government. So, speak for yourself. You know, if you are bringing national issues, if you are talking about corruption, yes, it is a national issue. Be very specific. This is where there is corruption. I'm talking about, no, COVID-19 donations, where are the resources? The resources have not been accounted for. That is, that is commendable. Not just speaking, hey, there is corruption. Hey, there is God. You're talking about God. Which God? Hey, which God? So, that is my view. Okay. Then, uh, people say, uh, your party, uh, uh, personally, haven't, you have a team for EPP? I do have a number of people. I do have a number of people because, but the, the other thing is also, I'm trying to do politics differently. Mm -hmm. I want to do smart politics. I want to do smart, po smart politics. It's not just about making all the noise, whoa, 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 with cadres and everything, and say we are doing politics. You need to be effective in whatever you are doing. You need to be effective. Cadarism does not really, most of the times, achieve anything for the Zambian people. But if positive engagement is what really uh, helps. So from my point of view, in our part, we don't want cadres. So you want here, you saw me, I've come here for this interview. I've come alone. I go everywhere alone. You will never see me coming with the uh, cadres and whatever, whatever. No, not at all. My vice president right now, she's busy. She's a business lady. She's working. She's being productive. Lusaka province uh, chairman, he's a businessman. He's, he's being productive. Those are the kind of people that we have. And we don't want to cause uh, the halabalu that uh, you know many political parties are associated with. We don't want that. But uh, you are a party president. Why did you want to stand for Lusaka mayor? You see, what I why I wanted that because um, our party was formed after the general elections, after the last general elections. Okay. So we have never participated in the general elections. But this election of um, mayor came in between. And I thought it would be a good uh, a, you know, uh, platform for us to, you know, to, to try you know, to participate in an election and have that experience. And also to, to get a feel of how many people uh, can vote for Chilifa Tayali. Because as a politician, elections are it's where you gauge, you know? you gauge yourself if you are popular or not, or if you are being accepted or not during an election. And that's why I went for, for that position as, as mayor. I basically wanted to, to have a feel. You know, when I move around, I see a lot of people, hey, tally, hey, touch and go, what? Yeah. But with that, I can't really gauge, can, are these people really happy with me or they are just there because they have seen me. But if they will say, hey, hello, hello. Hey, you know? So an election helps you to gauge yourself. Okay, let's talk about the bailiffs. Was that real? You know, I actually, I actually, um, uh, I just forgot. I wanted to come with some of the documents that is associated with that. Because when you talk about court issues, the good thing is that, you know, it's about records. Yeah. Our courts are courts of records. So, you, and uh, you know, facts don't need, you don't need to defend yourself from facts. So when somebody was jumping around like a popcorn in a pot, <laughs> talking about beliefs and what and what and what, you know, I just uh, ignored Balabash Kulubantu because really, you know, sometimes when a, when a pe person goes so low, I mean, in as much as you want to take them on, I mean, you need to reserve yourself, uh, 
you know, some dignity. When a person really just throws himself right into the mud, certain times you need to reserve yourself some respect. So that's why I have not responded uh, to most of their number of accusations that uh, um, uh, uh, that grandfather. Simon Moyo. Yes, we can yes, he's a grandfather, you know, because a man who is over 50, he's a grandfather and we need to respect him. So basically I'm just respecting the man. So you, certain times you just see let the people talk. I mean, it's this frustration I'm talking about. This is why, you know, our party, we want to restore that dignity. You know, in, in this country, because of Insala, I want to, they have lost their dignity. But because of frustration, you know, they are coming up and now just... <laughs> but nonetheless, that issue, uh, I am, it has not uh, ended. I am taking it up. I am actually drafting uh, court uh, petitions for all the for all the allegations that uh, you know uh, did he take you to court the other time he said he's taking you to court did you guys go to court he started it and uh, he started it he took me to court and um, you know now the, here is the thing because look if you go to court you say this person is defaming me you sit and wait. Wait for the justice to run its course. Now, he took me to court, and yet he has been bickering around, you know? Instead of waiting for the court cases. Now, I am also now forced to take him to court. I don't take people to court, but I am forced to take him to court because he took me to court and yet he continued talking. So now, I have also re resolved to take him to court as well, so that for defamation. For defamation? Absolutely. So what are you, uh, your, I'm sure your, your, your daughters, your two daughters should be on social media. They see all these things. What do they say about? Well, look, on social media, a lot of people, a lot of people say a lot of things. Yeah. And some people on social media, they feel, they think they know you. Just because every day he logs in social media and he reads your articles and they think they know you. Yeah. But they don't know you. I mean, this is the first time that you are, meet, you are meeting me. I don't think you knew that I'm this handsome. <laughs> but now you have seen no, me I in did. person. Now uh -huh. you have seen me in person. Uh -huh. And I'm sure there is that, uh, you know, you can feel to say, uh, okay, you know. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, people on social media think that they, they know you, but they don't know you. My children know me. Okay. My children, my wife, they know me. They know Chilufia Tayali, the real Chilufia Tayali, not the one that they see on social media. Because, of course, on social media, certain things you so try you... to do, you try to do certain things or write certain things to attract their attention. But okay, when you're at home, you are a father, you are a husband, and these people know you. My wife, I mean, look at my wife. She's very beautiful, very intelligent. Yeah. She's not a fool to have married a fool that some of these people <laughs> think I am on social media. Yeah. Definitely not. Some people say, no, you are so poor and everything and everything. If I was that poor, how would I afford to date? I dated my wife for almost a year from Ethiopia. And I used to go to Ethiopia every two weeks. And yet somebody comes up to say, ah, oh, yo, you stay in a house, uh, which is, is that your house? To you, and so on. That and house so has on. so many speculations. No, it's a rented house. No, it's uh, somebody, a well-wisher that has given him the house. Let me, just, let me just put it this way. Material things don't matter to me. What matters is living a life and living it happily. Okay. You know, what you have, I have this, I have that, I have that. These things are just but accidents and a blessing from God. They can be taken away. Today I can boast of, no, I have such a big house and so on and so forth. Tomorrow I may not have it. No, I have such a big car. Tomorrow I may not have it. So for me, I want to present myself as Chilufatayali, away from whatever I have, away from whatever I don't have. Is your wife now, uh, her, you, you had uh, mentioned that she almost left you when she discovered that you were a politician. Yes. How is she handling that now? You see, and you see, this is again a proof that, uh, you know, I'm not a, 
a, a, a use, as useless as some of those people <laughs> think because uh, my wife indeed, she didn't like my public life. But by the fact that she ended up marrying me, and up to today, we are very, very happy. Um, it just goes to show that, um, you know, the real Chirufa Tayali, I think, is not uh, disappointing. And uh, my wife has seen that there is much more good in the Chirufa Tayali than... Does she read the comments on your posts? She reads, and we read, uh, we read, we read some of these comments even together. You know, most of the time before we sleep, you know, at night, eh, people, you know, read books. Okay, these days we have got a baby that keeps us, uh, you know, dancing around quite yes. the family. <laughs> but um, before, when she was pregnant, most of the times we would spend uh, our time before we sleep reading comments of people. Okay, together. that's nice. And uh, there, there was that, uh, was that true, that real, I saw a screenshot of your wife communicating with, uh, is it Simon Mwe or something like, don't involve me. There was a screenshot going around. No, I think it's the, it's, uh, it's this guy, um, this uh, freedom fighter. Yeah. Those, eh? <laughs> the baddest, the baddest chela. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was actually away and um, I think he Chela said something yeah. that uh, related to um, she commented something about the baby. Yeah. You know, I think he said uh, he's looking for money for milk or something yes, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife didn't take kindly, and um, she emailed, uh, she she inboxed, inboxed him to tell him to say, do whatever you are doing, but don't involve uh, the innocent uh, child. Yeah. So yeah, that is uh, that is the thing because one thing is that. Um, Again, in the public, sometimes people tend to uh, take my wife as uh, a naive person, whatever, whatever. She is one hell of a woman that would take you on, uh, you know, given a chance. Okay. Yeah. So you, uh, you have one love story that people love. I think you know that a lot of people admire how you love your wife, how you and your wife get along. What is one thing that you said you learned from your previous marriage that has made you a better man today? Paying attention, paying attention. Before, um, in my uh, um, in my previous marriage, you know, I was a young person. Uh, I'm a computer programmer. I write uh, uh, programs, and um, I tell you, most of these uh, programmer, computer programmers, will tell you how involving computer programming is. You know, such that many of these guys they don't sleep. They don't sleep. They take a lot of time on the computers trying to sort out and so on and so forth. So I was so consumed in my work and I wanted to succeed, I wanted to make it, I wanted to have that, I wanted to have that, I wanted my family this and so on and so forth. So because of that, I forgot my responsibility as a husband, not as a father. I've always been very close to my children because through and through, I pick up my children from school, I drop them and so on and so forth. So that with, uh, but in terms of my wife, I think uh, I lost um, uh, touch uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, giving that attention. And uh, this time around, I think I give my wife uh, all the attention that she needs. Okay, nice. And uh, we're coming to the end of the interview. I enjoyed having a chat with you. I think I should have you on again. Well, we still have a lot of things to talk well, about. Well, I'll tell you this. I actually came because you are a young person. You are young people trying to do this. I really encourage young people. So those people that hallucinate, I thought I, that I don't encourage. But when I see, you know, progressive young people doing this kind of thing, I mean, I am, I'm, I'm encouraged and I like it. I would want to see, you know, an Oprah Winfrey out of Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll work even harder. Exactly. And uh, of course, definitely. So anytime uh, I am available for that reason, that I want to make sure that young people move forward progressively, not these people who are just uh, wasting time. But if there is no freedom of expression. Thank you very much. All right, so this has been Getting Candid with me, your girl, Helen. Remember to subscribe and turn on the bell so that you don't miss anything. I hope you enjoyed this episode because I did. Bye-bye.